open, frank discussions. I don't remember seeing uh, that many people around the table for something so important. Uh, car manufacturers coming from, from everywhere, all the big companies are here, ministers, provincial, federal, insurance, uh, people, ports, trains, we're all here. I'd like to know what your benchmark for success is out of this. Like you're going to want results. What clear, are your clear solutions? I want clear solutions. We're going to suggest some stuff. Our, yesterday we announced already some measures. More to come. But I want us to hear what everyone is ready to do in their part. Have you been taken by surprise on this issue? Is it was it something that was even on your? No, radar? we've we've been discussing this uh, in, in government, uh, in caucus for a long time. I've been meeting with the car manufacturers industry. My co I've been meeting with the port. Uh, and it was now time. We were ready to have the summit. And I think this would be beneficial for us. Bro. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, what are you coming to hear today? What about we, uh, more concrete measures. We've announced two measures, the $121 million uh, for the Ontario Police Forces to combat guns and gangs and obviously auto theft. Yesterday, there's a, a substantive measure, the $28 million into the ports. Today, I want to hear from the insurance companies. I want to hear from the auto companies because there is a technological side. We need trackers in the cars. And let's see what we're going to do on the justice front if we want to make any, any changes to the current mandatory uh, prison sentence for auto thefts and so forth. But we need to reduce auto thefts. We need to get rid of our organized crime. And we need to tell these folks that you can't go into the communities and scare people and make them feel unsafe in their communities. That's got to come to an end. What are your constituents saying to you? I mean, this is an issue in your community. They, people have to be angry. Um, you know, uh, people, rightly so, need to express their concerns on issues like this. And it's public safety. And we need, we need to make sure all Canadians feel safe in their communities. And that's exactly what we're doing. And, you know, look at everyone that's here today. We have the mayors of the major cities in Canada. We have the auto manufacturers. We have the Canadian Finance Leasing Association. Every stakeholder that is uh, part of this conversation is here today, and we're coming up with concrete solutions. And we've already seen so far this year a uh, significant double-digit reduction in auto thefts in New York region. So there is work that has been done, and, there, and some of the results are paying off. But we need much, more, much, much more good, positive results on this front. What have your conversations with your police chief been on this topic? What, what did they want from the government? Uh, further concrete me measures, more resources, which we provided the $121 million, uh, better cooperation with CBSA and the RCMP, which we are doing, which we are seeing. Police forces in Ontario have been to the Port of Montreal. There have been a lot of coordinated uh, efforts so far. We're seeing the results of these coordinated efforts. You're seeing every other, every couple of days more and more vehicles being recovered uh, from, the, from being sold in front of people's uh, houses and stuff, and that's got to come to an end. You're welcome. Thank you. You mentioned in your uh, speech that you've heard from a lot of different uh, prosecutors that uh, car thieves only spend a single night in jail. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so the feedback we're getting locally is, is what, what you'll see is uh, someone might spend a night in jail. Um, if they do, they actually get compensation from the organized crime that is behind it. And so we are, we're not seeing the sentences that would be consistent with um, similar crimes in the in the gun space or the, or the drug space and so it, it, it is a high reward and low risk right now for organized crime and it's why it's proliferating every year um, so it's it's terrifying it, it's become more brazen um, and it's not just stealing the cars now they're knocking down doors there's violent carjackings this is the number one complaint I have right now in Peel region so yeah, I'd say the largest part of the issue is screening. You know, if we had the machines that could do the screening are about $3 million each. If we had four of them in Montreal, one at the Intermodal Hub in Brampton, I think that would suffocate the industry. So I say screening is the number one issue. Sentencing would, would, would follow close behind. What, what do you make of the government's announcement yesterday uh, $28 million to help with these scans? So very encouraging. I like to see that all spent in year one, not over three years. Uh, I'd also say it needs to be targeted. You know, if you have a fire and you send a fire truck, you focus the water on the fire. If this was done uh, on a per capita basis across Canada, it wouldn't, wouldn't really work in the sense that where we're seeing the industry um, flourish is this Toronto to Montreal corridor. The Prime Minister this morning kind of floated the idea of stricter penalties for, for current thefts. Do you have any idea day by year by what you would like to see when it comes to a penalty? Like what, what is the number or time? So, 
helpful. I, I don't have an arbitrary um, number. I think it's complicated too because organized crime is particularly focused on young offenders who don't have the same sentencing uh, parameters. When you heard the Mayor of Montreal speak about the number of young offenders, the OPP Commissioner talked about the number of, of young offenders, it is, it is alarming and so I would say that complicates, complicates it. But I think if you work with law enforcement on, on how we can make sure those involved in working with organized crime have real sentences, that would be helpful. Well, I would say the number one issue um, is public safety. You know, in, in Brampton, we've had extortion issues, auto theft skyrocketing. Um, I would say that that is playing a more significant uh, role right now in terms of the worry that it causes communities, uh, much greater than, than housing affordability. Mm -hmm. Public safety, number one for sure. If I look at my emails and the calls and the WhatsApp groups that I'm part of, it's, it's public safety. Have you had your car stolen? I haven't had my car stolen, um, but, you know, I, I had... I've had two members of council that have had their car stolen. I had one member of council who had his car stolen twice. Um, I have seen, but you know, I, I'm very involved in the different community associations. Every day on a WhatsApp group, I see a video of a stolen car. Um, we've heard that CBSA has taken a, a hit over the years, uh, budget wise. I got a story this morning that the staff has even trained up to level two. So here's the real challenge. You know, we could, we could have the CN Intermodal Hub say that um, there's a stolen car. Someone's knocking on the door. He's got his tracker. The stolen car is in the shipping container. Our police don't have uh, jurisdiction. So literally, they'll have to wait for CBSA. By the time CBSA gets there, because they're understaffed, it's gone. And so it's just we're in this horrible cycle right now where we're watching stolen vehicles in plain sight leave the country. And so CBSA needs training, they need manpower, and they need equipment. And, and if you're not going to do it through CBSA, you know, have a port authority that has the, the teeth to do so. As much as I'm critical about you know, the, the environment we're in right now, this is the first time we have a public safety minister actually listening and reacting, and so I, I'm optimistic um, that we're going to find solutions. Uh, and Dominic has been on the phone with a number of mayors across the country saying, tell us how we solve that. So it's, uh, it's great that we actually have a federal dialogue now. Okay. Well, as soon as they can... As soon as they can start to announce some of this screening capacity, as soon as they get that equipment in the Port of Montreal and staff it, uh, maybe the intermodal hub in Brampton, we have the largest intermodal hub in, in Canada, the, the busiest sort of intermodal hub. As soon as we get that equipment in, I think we'll start to see traction. Within six months a year? If, if, if they can get that equipment there, you'll start to see um, the car theft industry suffocated. Mm -hmm. So, are these standards enough? So, I, I think they may focus on another port, is, is what they're saying. It's, it's, it, it, the, the nature, the, the reason it's complicated is it's much more difficult to get to some of the western or eastern ports. Montreal is the easiest. So you can get it from Brampton in five hours to the port of Montreal. It's not the same proximity if you're going from Calgary to, to, to Vancouver. Um, so, obviously, there's multiple tools to use here, but I think the screening would be the biggest way to help. Oui. Oui, je peux. Oui, je... Essayez. Mm -hmm. On parle beaucoup de multiples francophones de Montréal, la Pologne, de Montréal, le Grand mm -hmm. de Montréal. Un peu un peu, c'est quoi le problème chez vous? Il nous faut beaucoup. C'est que tu prends de voir beaucoup de retours sur Montréal. Oui, oui. Et... C'est la même chose à Brampton. C'est c'est le port de Montréal est, est proche. C'est seulement cinq heures euh, par voiture et c'est plus que. Euh, 60% de la voiture qui est volée euh, arrive à le port de, de, de Montréal. Donc chez vous, c'est quoi? Qu'est-ce que vous voyez? Qu'est-ce que vous en parlez? Qu'est-ce que les gens vous mm. disent? Puis comme maire, à quel point vous pouvez comme, regarder ça se faire sans être capable d'agir? Mm. Pour moi, toutes les choses que nous pouvons faire euh, au niveau municipal, nous, nous, nous faisons avec les nouveaux policiers, avec euh, les, les programmes euh, pour protéger les voitures, mais pour euh, arrêter ce cette, euh, cette, euh, syndicat criminel, c'est important d'avoir un, un partenaire avec le port de Montréal. 80%, over 80%. Internationally, yeah. Yeah, so the re issue is very small locally. I know when they break it down nationally, 
they say it's 50-50 domestic and international. What we're seeing in the GTA in Ontario, it's disproportionately international. As the OPP commissioner said, 80% in Ontario, I bet it's even higher in the GTA. 80 shift in 80% to international markets. Okay, but what proportion is shifting? So, and I'm told it's almost, there's a little bit, we started to see a little bit to other ports, but it's almost entirely to the port of Montreal. Yeah. Thank you. So I've, I, we've been raising it for two years. We started to see this, this skyrocketing auto theft number. I say I'm, I'm encouraged because this is the first time the public safety minister said, how can we help? We're looking at solutions. You know, I've raised this to different pub previous public safety ministers and there was no interest in, in talking about how the federal government could be part of the solution. I take this as a very encouraging sign. This is, this is great news uh, uh, that we've got the government of Canada at the table. J'espère non. J'espère qu'ils peuvent avoir les annonces avec les, les nouveaux équipements euh, euh, très euh, dans sept mois. <rire> oui, plus vite possible. Les gens, les gens qui veulent les voitures, est-ce que ce sont des gens de l'Ontario, de Montréal, C'est les deux. Et, 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 et c'est typique, c'est très jeune. Très jeune, mineur. Euh, euh, oui. Très jeune, oui. Uh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. So, what's what's your first impressions? I guess of this meeting today is it is it positive? Is this what we need, or uh, what are you hearing? This? So, ab absolutely, it's a it's a positive step forward. You know, in Peel Region, we have probably the highest rate per capita of stolen autos, 600 a month, almost like one an hour in, in Peel Region, and um, you know, for us, we've been speaking to multiple sectors this is not a just a police uh, solution it needs to be discussed with industry partners provincial federal municipal elected officials uh, law enforcement as well so today is really marking um, uh, another step forward in it. it from a policing perspective we have been absolutely engaged with each other uh, and working with industry partners insurance manufacturers the automobile sales industry to see where the formative changes can come. Uh, today is another step forward in our ability to have that conversation. The real, real test of this is to see if uh, post today there's um, continued investment and collaboration to make sure we mitigate the risk of auto thefts. Uh, can I just to be sh clear? This is an organized crime issue. It's not just the theft of somebody's property from a, a driveway. It is a real significant macro issue that requires a lot of coordination. Can I ask you, this, this, seemed, the, this rise in auto theft really happened during the pandemic. Was this something that you know, caught Peel Police and other police forces on the back foot? Was this a surprise to you folks too? So it, organized auto theft has uh, existed for decades. You know, there's cases in the 90s of vehicles putting in cargo containers being taken elsewhere. So it's not new from that standpoint. But without a doubt, during the pandemic, the supply chain issues that, that caused backups and the ability to sale, the sale of vehicles uh, shifted you know, people to a low risk, high reward uh, type of uh, criminal activity, in which is the ease it is to take a vehicle and export it from this country. Uh, has in itself is turned it into, uh, you know, we're a source country uh, in Interpol's number one source country for stolen autos internationally. And um, it is used to fund a variety of different things, inclusive of organized crime, drugs, firearms, uh, internationally. So it, it's, it's a significant issue. I don't think it's caught us off guard. I think policing, I think what we're here to say today is that we, from a police standpoint, uh, have been on top of the issue as best as we can, but it requires other people to come alongside of us, inclusive of government and industry, to help mitigate the issue. Chief, can you tell us more about, we're saying that there's a lot of violent uh, Can you give some examples of what's happening on the ground with your uh, yeah, yeah, Yes, for sure. In, you know, in, in Peel, you know, we've had an international student who was delivering food uh, in his vehicle be carjacked and dragged and he's lost his life. So that's the extreme. There's people that are sleeping in their homes 
and uh, you know people are walking into their homes, breaking down the door uh, to steal keys. The the uh, the ability to shift from just taking it from your driveway to acts of violence is a concern to us. The rates provincially in Ontario of carjackings and the violence associated to the theft of a vehicle is uh, growing right across the province. And how do you explain that? How do you explain the, the, the violence? Well, you know, so many, many people are alive to how they can prevent the theft of a vehicle, whether it's uh, within their home, uh, parking their vehicles inside, uh, aftermarket uh, theft-related uh, tools, Faraday bags. So, you know, conceivably there's a shift in people's uh, approach to how to get a car, right? It's now shifted to, we'll just take it from you while you're at a gas station or, uh, you know, walk into your home or break into your home to do it. So, you know, there's multiple approaches to it. The whole, uh, I hate to say it, the ecosystem of the person who steals a car to it ending up uh, being sold for double the value in a, another country requires multiple people along the chain. And the individuals that are stealing it uh, have just a wanted disregard for uh, people with the respect for property. So it's, it's effortless for them to, to just take a car. What makes I don't have the data on uh, on. Yeah, we, we don't have the data on. I don't have it with me on how many were, obviously. Uh, you know, I, I think you know there's a sliding scale. There's individuals for sure that um, are uh, part of taking a car or stealing a car uh, that are never been in the in the justice system at all, and there's some that. Uh, are associated to criminality, which means that there's a higher likelihood that they're going to take part in criminal activity like that. Now, one of the things we do, we are encouraging is it to be looked at, um, and I'm not comparing the two, but in, in the case of uh, uh, illicit drug trafficking, we know that the sale of uh, drugs is an offense. If you're part of an organization that's it's it's also you know, distributing it, you know, it, it is a, you know, there's di different type of offenses. When you look at a, a vehicle, it, 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 for the most part, is, is treated as the loss of a property. Uh, and what we're, we're saying is that it maybe requires some discussion and attention to how it could be looked at as a commodity that is uh, part of a bigger, bigger uh, issue. Are you right? saying the criminal is not strict enough? No, we, we're not. We're not saying that. Like the code, the code allows us right now to continue to enforce enforce it. But is it possible for uh, looking at legislative authorities, whether it be from the criminal code to customs excise, that would help turn the dial down? Um, it's it's absolutely worth the discussion, and and these are the ones that are ongoing right now, uh, federally. Great. You know, I, I think, you know, the, the, the penalties the federal government has increased, some of them over time, that's occurred. Uh, but we, we think there's no one solution to, to stopping auto theft. It has to happen across of everybody's area of purview. And uh, one of the things we're absolutely encouraging is discussion on potential uh, uh, considerations to the criminal code or the prosecution of them that would be part of the equation in terms of turning the dial down. Just to clarify, yeah. uh, are the crimes more violent? Is it linked to the technology that the people need the key itself? How, how do you explain that? So I, I think uh, I, I mentioned it before, uh, it's a low risk, high reward commodity, a vehicle. It, it doesn't it take a lot to, to steal a car and the path the least resistant is to take it physically from somebody. And, and as we continue to improve, you know, technology, aftermarket prevention items, 
uh, I think that might have lended itself to a little bit of how we see it showing up in society. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. I have Commissioner Karik with Commissioner me too. Karik, that's a two Good person. afternoon. It's just afternoon. barely afternoon. As you can appreciate, uh, when you're looking at the trends that are going on across the country, really high in Quebec and extremely high in Ontario. And I thought it was apropos that uh, Mr. Karik stands next to me and answers any of your questions. You can just stand a little closer to the mic for me. Yeah. Why is the situation so bad, particularly in Ontario? Why those particular problems? Ontario and Quebec are particularly troubling because of the volume of these high-end vehicles. So you've got very densely populated urban areas uh, where these vehicles are available and then there's easy access to corridors to transport them to the ports of export. So that's one of the reasons why these two areas are predominantly higher than other areas around the country. And why does it become so easy to steal, steal a vehicle? Detectives I've spoken to said it's actually not that tricky, especially for the it's, well, it's because there was enormous advancements in vehicle technology, anti-theft technology. And if you look at the success rate of that, 1999 to 2014, there was almost an 80% decrease in the theft of motor vehicles. As criminal markets and organizations caught up and got ahead of technology, that technology is now being exploited. So this provides us an opportunity to enhance that technology and focus on a prevention. What you talked a lot about how violent, um, maybe explain to us the spike that you're seeing and how violent these thefts are coming So we have seen a 206% increase in carjackings in the greater Toronto area, a prevalence of firearms, which is very concerning. We're seeing residential break and enters, Home invasions, where actually is the robbery of vehicles and or the key fobs required to operate those vehicles from a policing standpoint and from every stakeholder that participated here today. It's about finding solutions to ensure that the citizens in Ontario and right across Canada are able to maintain the quality of life that they deserve and we have a safe and secure environment. We also if, if, we, if we were still starting our cars and keys, would this, would this be a problem? Would this explode in the way? It was a problem. So back in the 1990s, this was a problem where, where mechanically they manipulated motor vehicles, they forced entry, forced ignitions. Um, it is partly driven by the supply and demand issues, but being able to now manipulate and exploit technology, it has made these vehicles extremely vulnerable. The cost of them, it's highly profitable, and there's very low risk. So only only in Ontario, we only saw 68% of those convicted serve a sentence of six months or less. We need to see stiffer penalties. We absolutely need to have a deterrence for these crimes. Do you share, do you share the concern by the Canadian Association of the Chiefs of Police that focusing on one court will allow organized crime to adapt? Yeah. And what, what do you think that means? What does that add? Absolutely, I share that concern, but that does not mean we don't immediately intensify our activity at the ports of concern, but this needs a whole of Canada approach. We will disperse the problem unless we look at this as th through a national lens, just as the RCMP has been and has been assisting us with national and international intelligence. This needs to be a whole of Canada sim a systematic approach to solving well, this I, issue. I, 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 just, I, I would just add to what Mr. Karik just mentioned is Montreal is key because of the route that the boats take to get to the, the, the countries that are, are, are taking the theft of vehicles. If you shift, there might be pressure where things shift to BC. I would see the market probably increase because the route that the cargo ships have to take, it's much longer than Montreal right now or Halifax. On, on, on. Is there an intelligence value? We heard a lot about um, you know, the minister campaign raised it. Why aren't you guys on, on top of this as you know, intelligence? Absolutely, there is no intelligence failure here, not. You saw the data that was available in the session that we had this morning. There is ample amounts of intelligence to provide us insight into this criminal market and the organized crime groups that are responsible. Where there is a gap is in sharing of all of that information with non-law enforcement stakeholders and in some case with 
critical law enforcement partners, both locally and internationally. So there is an opportunity to improve access to that intelligence, um, and the RCMP are critical in advancing the information sharing, and the commissioner will speak to it internationally, but there is no intelligence gap, so, none. Yeah, so I'll, I'll add to Commissioner Karik's comment. The RCMP have, uh, under Commissioner Karik's leadership, and as well as uh, Madame Boussaleh's leadership, the Sauté de Québec, we have uh, RCMP members embedded in the Project Vector and Project Recherche de la Sauté de Québec. And, that, the, and that's not new. We've always worked together. And the purpose why we bring everybody together is to have access to all the same information. On the international side, where we've never been positioned, is you probably heard of CPIC before, our CPIC data entry, that uh, every, every vehicle registration, criminal record, individual is entered in this database that's queried 330,000 330, times a day. That is going to have a direct link to Interpol's database. And now someone, a host country who's part of Interpol, which is 196 countries that are part of Interpol, will have access to clicking on the Interpol's database and it will link into our CPIC to identify that that's a stolen vehicle. And the RCMP's federal policing program has uh, resources deployed around the world to start, as we start building this intelligence pictures, is working with local port authorities and local, secure, uh, local police law enforcement agencies to get that picture and to, and to get to who's actually importing the cars. On Interpol, yep. uh, the public safety minister did kind of uh, put out a tease yesterday saying that there was going to be an announcement perhaps coming with helping law enforcement and the RCMP to be able to work um, in tandem more with Interpol. Can, I mean, there hasn't been a formal announcement yet, but why, why would that piece be necessary? Uh, more resources to, uh, for the RCMP well, uh, and law enforcement to work It is a tease. You have to wait next week. <laughs> no, but, but honestly, uh, you ask any law enforcement across the country, if you wanted additional funding, additional resource, everybody would say yes. So when you look at the phenomenon right here, you look at the violence over the last three years with theft of vehicle, I think it's just, it's common sense that we will expand our international footprint to help what's going on here in Canada. And just as a follow up, on the international piece again, I talked to one detective who was saying that you know vehicles that, again, from Ottawa or Toronto are ending up in places, places like Ghana, Nigeria, the UAE. What, why is it that there is such a market um, for these vehicles? In I, I can only presume the type of vehicles that we have, the luxury vehicles uh, that we have in Canada. Uh, Mr. Karik alluded to the, 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 not the difference, but the similar, similarities between Quebec and Ontario when it comes to the population. And it, it's attractive and it's, luc it's a very lucrative business. Uh, Commissioner Karik could, uh, could expand on the cost of a vehicle once it gets there and how much it's being sold. It's, it's unreal. Tell us, tell us. So in a lot of cases, these vehicles are selling for double the retail value if they were sold here in Canada, appreciating that they have been stolen. So there's very little investment. It's just the various criminal actors that make up these criminal networks. Some of these vehicles that the commissioner has alluded to are not even manufactured in the countries where they are being sold. So they are highly sought off after commodities and that add on to that the global supply chain shortage of new vehicles and the parts necessary to manufacture those vehicles all that comes together to create the demand that we're seeing Ben, l'augmentation de violence ce qu'on voit présentement c'est des jeunes de 14 à 18 ans qui se font engager euh, se font payer entre 1 000 et 3 000 pour voler une voiture. Et puis, euh, c'est supporté par le crime organisé, qui, est, euh, qui leur but, c'est de faire de l'argent. Et puis, euh, la façon qu'ils se prennent aujourd'hui pour le faire, c'est une extrême violence comparée à plusieurs années, pour atteindre leur but, pour prendre la voiture, pour, faire, pour effrayer la population. Il y a des endroits où les gens sont sortis avec des pistolets pointés aux propriétaires. Euh, « Donnez-moi vos clés, on sait que vous êtes assuré, on va partir. » Il y a des situations qui ont, ont défoncé des portes de résidence pour aller chercher les clés. C'est du jamais vu. C'est des jeunes voyous qui font partie des gangs de rue qui n'ont aucune, euh, aucune valeur humaine quand ils commettent un crime. Pourquoi ce n'était pas comme ça avant et que ce n'est maintenant? Bien, sur, regarde, regarde historiquement au niveau du crime organisé, puis l'évolution de la société même, la différence au niveau de la société, ce qui s'est passé au niveau de le crime, le crime organisé. Euh, les gangs de rue, il y a 20 ans, n'étaient pas aussi, euh, je vous dis, pas aussi présents qu'ils sont présentement. Ils ont gravi, ils ont monté les échelons, puis à fur et à mesure, ils apprennent, ils s'adaptent, et on voit ce qu'on a aujourd'hui. Pourquoi on n'est pas capable de les arrêter? On parlait de, 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 de certaines enquêtes qui progressent plus rapidement quand on parle de biens volés. Peut-être nous expliquer cette 
Bien, je, je pense que toute enquête a ses, toute enquête a ses défis. Euh, parce que le fait que la police doit avoir l'information qui est divulgable quand on va à la cour. Et des fois, il y a des complexités qui s'attachent à ça. Quand, quand on regarde le crime organisé qui est impliqué présentement, c'est une souche locale, nationale, je veux dire, dire mais il y a aussi quelqu'un qui est à l'autre bout, dans un autre pays, qui paye le double du prix de la voiture pour la faire exporter ou importer, je devrais dire, à leur, à leur nouveau pays. Donc, nous, c'est ça qu'on veut faire avec la police fédérale, c'est ça qu'on veut faire avec les, les ressources que nous avons à travers le monde, c'est de travailler avec les différents pays, avec les, euh, les services, les corps de police, pour qu'on puisse les intercepter. Si on ne les intercepte pas ici, la, la deuxième meilleure chose, c'est de les intercepter lorsqu'ils arrivent au port dans un autre pays. Well, you saw the funding yesterday that the minister uh, gave to CBSA, and, and, and CBSA, uh, I don't want to talk on behalf of Aaron, that would be a question you'd have to ask Aaron, but they were more into the import business. And now we're talking about the export business. And I'd be more than happy for you to share the question with, with Aaron to, 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 to provide an answer on your question. Can I just, sorry, this is a bit of a technical question, so forgive me if people are watching talking. at home, but so I've been told that one of the issues having some vehicles, right, is there's a diagnostic port underneath mm -hmm. the steering wheel and that there's pretty cheap technology that you can make like a, a ghost key to get into the diagnostic port and, and get the vehicle going and drive it away. Is there anything that can be done about that technology? What, why is it so cheap? to create kind of ghost keys that can, can go into these things. Yeah, there's two uh, vulnerability points as it, it relates to accessing these ports. Uh, one is in the vehicle itself and the other is normally found behind a body panel like a headlight or a bumper. And thieves are accessing these ports to be able to override the anti-theft system to simulate the keys, the ignitions and steal the motor vehicles. There was a commitment here this morning from automotive manufacturers to look at that technology. There was a commitment from government to look at legislation that may be able to assist in advancing that technology. There was also a commitment here today to look at regulation or legislation that can prevent criminals from purchasing the technology used to manipulate those systems. One of the things we're calling for as police leaders is the remote ability to disable a vehicle, just like there is your phone. If your phone gets stolen or lost, it can be deactivated and it's no more than a brick. We do believe that there's technology that could be advanced to create that same scenario with a stolen motor vehicle. And we encourage all Canadians to look at advanced tracking available through aftermarket providers. These can deter criminals and help with the returning of vehicles. Air tags, there's a tag system, they put additional VIN numbers on the vehicle, multiple tracking devices at various spots around the vehicle so it doesn't just rely on one. An engraving on the windshield of the motor vehicle that says to a thief, this vehicle can be tracked and located. But, so, c'est une question que vous avez demandé à l'ACFC. On travaille en collaboration, comme j'ai mentionné tantôt, euh, sous le leadership de M. Kareek. Il y a une équipe euh, intégrée qui s'appelle Vector, pour laquelle la GRC et ici, la SFC, CBSC dans le Vector? Yes, ainsi absolutely. que la SFC dans le Vector. Ça, c'est un, un hub, si vous voulez, d'enquête pour partager surtout l'information pour que tout le monde traverse la même information. Et la même chose au niveau de la, la Sûreté du Québec, qui ont le projet recherché, pour lequel euh, euh, M. Couric euh, a des ressources, pour lequel la GRC a des ressources, pour lequel la SFC a des ressources, pour qu'on puisse travailler ensemble. Est-ce que c'est ça le, le problème principal? C'est-à-dire qu'on n'a pas le, les ressources ou euh, pour, pour, pour vérifier les conteneurs? Ben, je je t'inviterai à parler à Mme O'Gorman, puis demande-lui combien est-ce qu'il y a de conteneurs au port de Montréal. Je n'ai pas le numéro exact, mais c'est phénoménal. Si, euh, si une, s'il y a un désir ou une expectative que on, tous les conteneurs seront fouillés, je pense que c'est quasi impossible. Mais je pense qu'il faut être stratégique dans l'approche avec l'information qu'on a, le renseignement qu'on a, pour vraiment cibler les conteneurs pour lesquels on va regarder. I think any additional tools when it comes to legislation are needed. I look at, uh, if you really want to hurt the organized crime, hit them where it hurts, it's the money. FinTrack's been doing some work on following the money trail. Really good work with Barry and his team. Uh, that's one. I, I think that um, 
you should also look at the uh, the automotive industry, the insurance industry, but there's a lot of things. I, I even go as far as, we should perhaps have a listing in the criminal code, just like we have terrorist listing for organized crime groups that we know. Well-known established organized crime groups should be a listing in the criminal code. So those are things we're going to bring to the table, because as you've seen in here, this is just the first, right? The important one is the next step and where we go from here and make sure that we have tangible outcomes. We have time Don't. for one question. Are these safe actually You mentioned that you know, there's technology that the sort of brick, but it can still be taken apart and its parts would still be worth money. So how much would this kind of tech help for cars? The same thing would happen yeah. for them. There's no one solution to this complex issue. That's one of the initiatives that should be undertaken, and that brings an end to an immediate risk to officer and public safety. If that vehicle cannot free, flee from police, if that vehicle cannot been, be driven, even if momentarily, that eliminates a significant officer and pay, public safety risks and increases our ability to recover that vehicle before it's exported out of the country or broken down into parts domestically. Thank you all very Thanks much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And we certainly support uh, this, this summit. Uh, we are disappointed that the unions are the frontline workers that are most involved in this. For example, CBSA and other border officers were not invited. Uh, they participated, I believe, online. Uh, I don't think that's acceptable when we are talking about solutions that meet uh, what all Canadians uh, need to look at. It's simply not acceptable uh, that the unions were not uh, welcomed. Uh, they have a lot to say. These frontline workers have a lot to say. I'd like to also say that the announcements that have been made so far have fallen short of what is actually required. The NDP has called for in the House of Commons a crackdown on organized crime. We've called uh, for a crackdown on money laundering. And this is something that uh, both the previous government, Conservative government and the current Liberal government have not taken a strong stand on. Uh, that's why we pushed uh, for so many years to have a beneficial ownership registry so criminals can no longer hang, hang, uh, hide behind numbered companies. Uh, we believe that there needs to be new initiatives uh, moving forward. That includes restoring the crime prevention centers that were ended under the old uh, Stephen Harper government. Uh, we need to make sure that there is increased funding for CBSA. We are still critically 800 officers short of what is required even to meet current requirements for CBSA. And if we're talking about exports and we want to crack down on the ports, we surely need more uh, CBSA officers in order to ensure uh, that the cr organized crime is not benefiting from the loopholes that currently exist. These are all things that we've called for and we're going to continue to push in the House of Commons and in committee uh, for these common sense, uh, smart, uh, smart on crime policies to actually be put into place. Alors, l'MPD appuie le sommet en est dessus que les syndicats, les travailleurs et les travailleuses euh, de, de première ligne n'ont pas été invités. Ils ont participé en ligne, mais ils devraient participer en personne. On croit vraiment qu'il faut plus d'investissement. Euh, là, quand on regarde l'Agence des services frontaliers du Canada, on manque toujours 800 euh, agents euh, fichiers à la frontière. Et quand on Il s'agit des exportations euh, qui prennent place à cause justement de cette manque d'officiers. Il faut vraiment que le gouvernement investisse pour revenir à un niveau plus élevé. Aussi de faire euh, vraiment euh, contrer le crime organisé et euh, le lavage d'argent. Et il y a beaucoup des, des crimes, euh, des criminels qui cachent derrière des compagnies euh, numérotées Il faut que ça cesse. Et bien sûr, à toutes les centres de prévention de crimes qui ont été euh, éliminés avec l'ancien gouvernement Harper, euh, le gouvernement Trudeau n'a pas fait ces changements-là. Ça, c'est un autre euh, euh, investissement qui pourrait faire vraiment une différence. Alors, nous, on va continuer à pousser dans les prochains jours pour le, que le gouvernement agisse. Uh, Mr. Julian, what about calls to beef up, um, essentially, the, the response uh, to people who would engage in auto Prime Minister suggested perhaps stiffer penalties could be coming. What, what do you think of that? Uh, we believe uh, that that's something we would certainly look at the legislation, but we believe that's justified. Bail reform is justified, but as uh, the RCMP just mentioned, I mean, what we have is is young uh, criminal gangs uh, where the kids are paid two, three, four thousand dollars to steal automobiles. That doesn't make sense. Uh, that uh, without the other actions to actually ensure that we are not seeing. Uh, 
criminal street gangs able to recruit uh, more people to engage in this criminal activity. So it actually takes a, a full range of actions and measures. We've, we've not seen the government act. Uh, we are hoping we're going to continue to push for the government acts. Mais toujours, il faut regarder le projet de loi. Mais on n'est pas contre l'idée qu'on renforce le code criminel. Uh, aussi, on est en train de, de faire le, uh, de réformer, bien sûr, la uh, présence. Uh, de, de présence pour, pour les, les bails, pour uh, le, le mot en français, je cherche uh, « bail reform euh, ». Libération sur caution. Libération sur caution, merci beaucoup. La libération sur caution, on est pour uh, cette réforme-là, c'est important. Uh, il faut dire que ce n'est pas juste ça, c'est toute une gamme des réformes, uh, c'est toute une gamme des investissements qu'il faut faire. Et le fait qu'on soit toujours à 800 officiers uh, manquants, quand il s'agit de l'Agence de services frontaliers du Canada, euh, ça devrait inquiéter des gens que, dans un sens, on est en train de faciliter euh, cette exploitation des autos qui sont volées sur les rues des, des villes canadiennes, euh, Montréal comme à Vancouver. Merci. That's something we're prepared to look at. But we believe it's even more important to crack down on organized crime, uh, to crack down on money laundering. This is something that has been a weakness both of the previous conservative government and the current liberal government. They haven't been taking the actions to actually stop money laundering. And, and that's why we've been pushing for years to put in place a beneficial ownership registry so the criminals can't hide behind numbered companies. These are all actions that can be taken. It takes a more comprehensive approach. We're certainly prepared to look at legislation. Uh, and as we've been prepared to look at bail reform legislation, but that in itself is not sufficient to take action against the, the theft of, uh, of automobiles that we're seeing across the can Canada, whether it's Montreal or Vancouver. Uh, this is something that is increasing. The government has to take action. Can I just ask you about the situation in Bell Mills, Ontario? They've declared a state of emergency after uh, we, we believe that we should be uh, declaring a, a state of emergency across the country for the opioid crisis. Uh, Don Davies, our health care critic, has been calling for that, Jagmeet Singh, our national leader. That we're seeing a rise in opioid deaths, particularly in Alberta and Saskatchewan, a massive increase, uh, over 20%, I believe, in Alberta, over 30% in Saskatchewan. Uh, we need to take this seriously across the country. Uh, the only uh, small ray, ray of hope, I think, is that the British Columbia numbers have now seemed to have plateaued. Uh, they are not increasing uh, in, in the way that we're seeing in Alberta and Saskatchewan. The, the number of deaths is appalling, and we need to start bringing those numbers down. Uh, but the safe supply approach that the British Columbia government has taken seems to have had an impact at slowing the increase. And Alberta and Saskatchewan, where they have taken exactly the opposite measures, have seen skyrocketing numbers. That's profoundly worrisome, and we need a federal government that steps up and declares a, a state of emergency across the country for this health emergency that is killing so many Canadians. Do we need a summit like this? In the fact, we, uh, we need a state of emergency now. Uh, the, the summit is, is I, I don't think, as important as actually taking immediate action. Uh, and the NDP has laid out a number of things that the government should be doing, providing more resources, declaring that state of emergency to ensure that, uh, that we are providing all of the necessary supports to, to stem the tide and reduce the number of deaths, uh, and, and looking as well at a variety of measures, including holding the companies responsible for what has been an appalling loss of life of Canadians. Thank you. Merci.